We can't get nothing done. We can't get nothing. Aaron! <laughs> that is not. I'm not entertaining anything. We need to get this video ready. Done. Welcome back, Journey Gang. How you doing? <laughs> what is wrong with you? You. Hey. <laughs> Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy all of that. Happy Because we hope you guys are safe and warm because I can't, clearly can't get the intro done. Call that person up that you've been meaning to call. Text that person you've been meaning to text, you know. Let's do some different resolutions for let's the new year. Let's get intentional. Yes, let's get intentional. It's a good word. We going up. Okay, Journey Gang? We going up in 2023. Period. Oh, period. Exclamation point. Period. Exclamation point. All right, we doing the Merrill family. Hi, we're the Merrills. I'm Becky Merrill. I'm married to Major Chris Merrill, who's currently deployed in Afghanistan for the next year. Oh, okay. We have four beautiful children who've come to into our family through adoption. Oh. Garrett, who is four, mm -hmm. and Elena, who is four, are Aww. biological cousins, and were born in Guatemala. Mm. They are so cute. Eddie, who is six, and Lydia, who is four, were born in Ghana Aww. and are a biological brother and sister. Aww. Guatemala children are living in orphanages that. Before we start, we start. Thank you for your service. This is a beautiful family. This is what this is what America should be about. It should be about helping each other from different parts of the regions out there. You know, serving your country if you want to serve your country, but. Just thank you for your service because, like, honestly, I just feel like it's the ultimate sacrifice. You know what I mean? To me, it still is the ultimate sacrifice because you're putting your life. That's all you have. <laughs> like, if you die, that's it. You don't. There's no more living and mm -hmm. experiencing things, being there with your children, being there with your family. Like, you're done. So putting your life on the line, like, ultimate sacrifice. So don't have funding. They struggle for food. They struggle for education. Garrett came home from Guatemala at eight months and he is my gregarious little man. It's yummy. Elena came home from Guatemala at 10 months. We're done. We're done. We have a very antagonistic relationship right now. I'm very angry at you. It's not what I want with my daughter. For Honestly, I mean, she's a typical, what, she was, well, how old was she? Like four. They said four. Well, I was just going to say her behavior is typical of a four-year-old. Yeah, I mean, they throw tantrums. They do that. I'm talking about something I don't like you right now. I don't like you either. I can like this. No, I mean, if we're going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like your behavior, okay? I still love you, but your behavior is. Mm -mm. And Lydia's adoption, we traveled oh, to Ghana. Honest. 40% of the population in Ghana lives on less than $1 a day. Fortunately, Eddie and Lydia were able to make it into the foster care situation and they have been with us in the United States for three months now. Eddie has only been speaking English for three months and that can make him really angry and frustrated when he can't communicate. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can see that. I do want to shout out to her though for keeping brother and sister together. Oh yeah. He will just explode. Eddie, that is enough. <laughs> Lydia still very much needs to have me close. Mommy loves. I struggle with the balance between forming attachments with my children and also disciplining them. Yeah. Lydia, do not hit me. I worry with Eddie and Lydia that I let them get away with too much. You may not throw the game away just because you are angry. Yeah, I think it could be also because these are not her biological children, but mm -hmm. they are her children now because she adopted them legally. But I just feel like it does kind of put you in a tight space because you already know they came from, a, they could have come from a traumatic environment. First of all, what obviously they did because their parents were not able to care for them. They got put into a system where someone else had to care for them and now someone else has to adopt them. You know what I'm saying? It's put in a position to adopt them. So that to me too if i adopted a child especially from another country i feel like i would be more hesitant to like not not to discipline because there still has to be rules and stuff established but i feel like you would feel more of a softer spot like because it's just like they already had some trauma in their life like not saying discipline is trauma but it's just like you always want you, you just i just feel like for me i would handle it more with kick gloves yeah. Because of the trauma they've already been through. Because I feel like, you know, kids like that, like when you come from a different country, 
Like you don't have and that then also natural, the language barrier. You don't have that natural bond with them. Exactly. Because if you from have birth. your own children, mm-hmm. you like immediately have that natural bond. Yep. And it's just like, oh, we we have an unspoken language, but mm-hmm. you know when you're adopted like this, you don't have that unspoken lang- unspoken language. Mm-hmm. You have to build that bond, and sometimes building that bond can be very hard. It can be. I don't expect enough of them because they haven't been in our family as long. I think we're going to need to fix that pretty pronto. Pretty pronto. Hi. Oh, is it Daddy? It's Daddy. Daddy. Mm-hmm. My husband is a pilot for the Marine Corps who's currently in Afghanistan. He is gone for the next year. Mm. Oh, somebody wants to talk to you. Chris and I try to stay in contact through email, infrequent phone calls. That's really good that, of course, this is how you have to do it. When he's deployed, he, all he can do is, like she said, email, call. Now, see, FaceTime and stuff wasn't really out. I don't no. believe he yet. I don't think so. Or she would have definitely mentioned it. Probably so. So, yeah. But Skype was around, wasn't it? Skype been around. So, maybe they could have been on Skype. I don't think so. Skype been around for years. That was like the but first they video. Okay, well, I don't know. All I'm saying is, this is how you can communicate and... It's unfortunate that the phone call is the only way that they can kind of still build the relationship with their dad, but God, you do. when you're a parent, you do what you have to do. Uh, Daddy, I, I miss you so much. I'm going to make you take so long. The hardest is holding my children when they cry I and say that they miss Daddy. Mommy gets sad when she misses Daddy. Said, it's okay to be so sad. Long? It's overwhelming to me at times. Mm. I love you too. I dig it. I dig it. It's tough. Mm. That's a dragon ball feet. No, yes. Uh-oh. Parenting while Chris is gone is. Oh Lord. My I favorite seen... words. No ma'am. I seen some biting going on. No ham. No ma'am. Biting and dragging. Boy, kids. That's what they do. Bite and drag and fight. Now at this age, it is very typical. I have yet to find a household. Now, hey, if it's you, like I said before, if your household, you have um, toddlers or small children and they don't fight, they just get along and everybody's hippie doo that's great for you. <laughs> but typically, when they're close in age like this, you know, I can like Dennis the Menace. It's going to be some stuff. I can like, yeah, I know some of y'all didn't see Dennis the Menace. If not, look up Dennis the Menace. But. Really hard because I don't have that additional support. I am on 24 7. Ow! You may not bite me! I have days where I feel like I am at my limit. Like I just need to run away. Hey! I need to be able to give my husband peace of mind while he's deployed overseas this next year. Super Nanny, we really need your help. Please hurry. Becky, I know you're at the end of your tether, but just hold on a little bit longer because this nanny's got some tricks in her bag. Yep. I feel like, too, um, it, I think she really needs help, like she said, when her husband's away. Because it seems like maybe when he's home, maybe the kids are a little bit more behavior. She needs more structure for when he's not there. That's exactly. That's, exactly. That's, That's what all. it's looking like. He's in Afghanistan this yeah. time. Mm. Eddie, right. you want chicken? No! Yeah! Just after no I arrived, chicken. Mum started getting lunch ready, and I can see that with Chris overseas, she's certainly got her hands full. Mm. This is gross. Seeing all this food on my floor, it's hard not to have Chris around because I'm completely outnumbered. Yep. Hey, please do not put your cup upside down on your head. <laughs> you do not want juice on your hair. I'm not well, an octopus, but I feel like I need to be. I get you, hey, mm-hmm. hey, she gets it. I just got done doing your hair. Take that sticky juice off of your hair. Get it off. When you have girls and their hair, oh boy. I have, we, you you guys know. Stop rolling around on the floor. If you're new here and you don't know, we have two girls. Mm, And honey, heads full of hair. And when I say I have to, yeah, when they roll around on the floor, which had to cut that out. (laughs) Um, But yeah, head full of hair. And when we talk about different textures, okay? Black people, we got curlier, kinkier textures. And when I say the kinkier the hair, the more it's going to track things. Mm. The kinkier the hair, it's like a lint tracker. A tracker. Old static shock head. Yep. It's like, because I have kinky, I have 4C, I have very thick kinky hair. And I'm telling you, if I was to roll around on this floor right now, I, it, I would vacuum everything up. <laughs> <laughs> that scare you? 
Hey, little people better not be outside. After lunch, Garrett and Elena went outside with no permission and no supervision. Yes, no balanced beam. What are you doing outside? We're playing. Then Mum came outside <laughs> to supervise all four kids. <laughs> <laughs> the way he just looked. It was like, we're playing. <laughs> no digger. Because he was looking like, what do you mean? What are we doing yeah, outside? <laughs> we're playing. Give me a touchdown. Being connected while he's deployed just because I sort of detach. When I get feeling too much, I just sort of put it in a box, put the box away up in a closet, and don't really look at the box. I could see that she was trying to contain herself and keep composed, because obviously it's very, very raw for her that there's so many thoughts that yeah. must be swimming around in her head every day. Mm. After dinner, Mum started getting the kids ready for bed. Yeah, that's... I don't know how I would feel because I've never been put in a position where my husband had to go away for a year. So honestly, when he's away, like even for work, just for that day, of, I'll be like, I can't, I couldn't imagine him not coming back. Like I would be like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we have to say that every time you see a veteran or, or a person, you know, in their, in their army uniform, you need to thank them because they are away from their families if they have a family. Most and nine times out of ten, those people that leave, most likely, even if they don't have children of their own, they still have a mother, they still have a brother, a sister, a cousin, somebody, mm -hmm. somebody they care about. Thank you for Garrett, your service, Eddie, like Undies, now. And yet again, mum disappeared. Sergeant Major came in. I mean, where was the words of encouragement? These are kids getting ready for bedtime, not soldiers going off to war. Hey, no, man. Uh -oh, oh. Go turn on the shower uh, now. Yeah, I certainly up. got the sense that mum's just trying to rush yeah. through the evening and just get over and done with. This is my nighttime struggle. Let's go. Garrett, let's go. Cars go in. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, wait we a hot dog on this. We need to start teaching children. <laughs> We, privacy. Yeah, like, we can't have everyone Now, there. this is what you do without the cameras. Still, honestly, they're... Okay, this is my this is my gripe, okay? We have little boys and we have little girls. We have two little girls and we have two little boys. We need to separate them from seeing... Even, I don't care what age. I, this is how I would do it, okay? I have two girls and I still... They still need to understand how to be appropriate with each, you know, mm -hmm. each other still. You know what I'm saying? So, um, in my opinion, mine, okay, just me, Alicia, opinion, little boys and little girls need to be, know how to start at this age. You need to start to, at this, I'm sorry, let me just back up real quick. I don't care how young they are. When they can start walking and talking, start teaching them about their private areas immediately. Yeah. Because there are a lot of things, especially today. Especially in 2022. 2022 going into 2023. These kids are way more advanced. And you need to start teaching them as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. Because. It's because of the internet. You, it's because of the internet. Exactly. The white bucket. What are you doing? <laughs> Not really feeling a winding down period here. Mm -hmm. No transition from day to night. It's all about tidying up and uh, getting ready for bed. Before long, Mum had the kids into bed. Good night. Okay. Sleep well. Becky was telling me that because Lydia and Eddie have only been in the States for three months, they're still very scared of the dark. Yeah, that's another thing, too. These kids are still new to everything. And they have been, obviously, you know, well, I could say, I don't, I don't remember being... I don't remember being scared of the dark. I just, yeah, I guess you, okay. I guess you could say scared of the dark because it was just like, everything's pitch black. Even now, I don't like pitch black. I've never been a fan of pitch black. I'm, I used to be terrified of the dark. In Ghana, the adoption coordinator said bad things happened in the dark, especially in their village. Sure. They come through and clear people out that are poor and set fire mm. to their shacks and whatnot uh, yeah. so eddie has a very real fear mm -hmm. eddie will tell me the dark the dark the dark mm -hmm. does he get out of bed they come in and find me mm -hmm. um lydia especially and then Lena and garrett come in and they argue over who's gonna lay next to mommy mm -hmm. wow that's real that's, that's real life over there yeah and that's what we were just saying add the trauma 
add new country, add new family, add all this stuff together. And it's just going to be more terrifying. Mm -hmm. And like she said, now they're arguing who's going to sleep next to mommy. And it's just, this is why she's in a situation because you gotta, you gotta handle this. This is more delicate than like, you know, get your act together and get in bed. Yeah. This is more, way, way more delicate. And now I'm going to tell you why. Because during the day, everything you're going to be doing with her is not neglect. Okay, you are parenting, you are showing her love, you are showing her affection. So she's perfectly capable of being able to sit on the naughty step and not feel like she's being abandoned okay. by any means. Mm -hmm. And see, real quick, that's exactly what I was just saying. It's going to be harder for mom to feel like she's disciplined because these kids are coming from neglectful situations. These kids are coming from traumatic and bad situations. So any little form of like, you know, uh, discipline is going to be like, yeah. well, I don't want them to feel like I, they're, you know, I'm a bad mom too. You because, want them to act right, right? Yeah, that's what Superman said. Don't yeah. feel like, don't feel like, you know, timeout is not going to hurt her. It's not. It's going to it's gonna teach her like, okay, I did something wrong. That's why I'm here. Yes, and my because time is up. She'll be right back. Even your by even your even if she had her own biological children, they still would try to manipulate and oh, say, yeah. "You're a bad mom because you put me in timeout." No, I'm not a bad mom. You just don't want to sit here. And so <laughs> you don't sit here. So I'm glad that Super Nanny is teaching her and coaching her on like you're not a bad mom because she did something wrong and now she has to serve her timeout. Because these kids need consequences. They do. These kids, they do. And there's a, that's why there's a certain way you do it. Mm -hmm. But neglect goes a long way. Neglect is leaving your child home for four or five days while you go to the club. Yeah, and not feeding them. Yeah. Clothing them. That's neglect. Keeping them in the basement or something like. Neglect goes further than a timeout. Excuse me. Lydia certainly tested mum by getting off of that step, but mum was persistent and she put it back every time. You're gonna bring it down and start the timer again. Yep. You got it. Yeah, the microwave timer. Lydia caught on very quickly and within 10 minutes, okay. the timeout was over. See? But the real lesson here is for mum, mm -hmm. that stepping up and giving your child boundaries and discipline means that you do love your child, hey. not that you don't. Hey. Good boy. Joy we can stop it right best. there. Ooh. That was the best. That was the ended on a good high note. <laughs> she said it best. Mm. When you establish rules and boundaries, boundaries, keywords. That's another form of love. It really is because how dare I not tell you that? And when you go into the real world, this is everything. When they say it starts at home, it that, that's does. a true statement. Mm -hmm. Like I know it sounds so cliche, but it does start at home. Like if you had no rules or discipline at home, this is why we see when we go out in the streets today, we see all these adults acting like maniacs. Mm -hmm. The Bible say. Train up the child in the way they should go, and when they get old, they will not depart from it. And that's exactly what that means. And what it means is that they won't depart from the lessons that you have taught exactly. them. Exactly. They'll, they'll remember them. They'll be like, oh, I remember. And they'll, they'll keep applying them to their life as they get older. Those lessons will evolve, and so and so will the lessons learned. So everything they learned will it. also evolve. Thank you guys for tuning in. Mm. We hope you had a great Christmas. Um, happy holidays. Just happy holidays. And I just hope that we continue to go into 2023 and we love on each other. Because the world needs love. It does. Love. It really, really does. Sweet love. Because. Because you yeah. people is crazy. Remember, guys, the journey continues. What? I can never. Why can't I ever, like, why? Save that for when you want to do your intro. No. I do it when it's called for. And that was it. It was called for. No, it wasn't. You do it every single time. Like, give me one time where you don't do anything. No.